So I am bringing you here today for Tappy Talks. And today's subject for Tappy Talks is a little weird. Um, on Instagram the other day, a friend of mine asked a question and it was, what would you do if you weren't allowed to tap dance? And I had to ask for clarification because I have to ask for clarification on every question anybody ever asks me because I'm that girl. But I'm just like, excuse me, but what do you mean by like not allowed? And they were like, well, if somebody told you that you weren't allowed or just circumstances in your life made it so that you just couldn't no matter how bad you wanted to. And I, I don't know, I kind of had like a seven of nine moment where on Star Trek Voyager, if you're a nerd like me, where I would just kind of went like, I would not comply. There's, there's no amount of somebody telling me I can't tap dance that would make me not tap dance. And this, like, I've been told because of knee injuries or ankle injuries, you can't tap dance for a little while. But actually, recently, I did get told that I can't tap dance. Uh, this knee injury is apparently an overuse injury, which that happens, you know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a spring chicken, guys. Like, it's an overuse injury. And I was told that it, it won't get better unless you stop tap dancing. And I was like, that's it? You don't want to offer me like physical therapy or ways to work with it and keep doing my job? And it, the, he just didn't see it as a job. He saw it as, oh, well, it's a hobby. You like it. And I'm like, well, I mean, I do like it, but it's my job. So um, I didn't comply. There was, there was nothing he could have said that would have made me go, oh yes, absolutely, I will stop tap dancing. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't fathom, but I know, and I, I know my friend is in this situation where they were told that they can't tap dance. And so that was where this question came from. And it got me thinking about a lot of things. Um, and it kind of segued my brain into, you know, I really wasn't ever told that I can't tap dance, but I have been made to feel a certain way because I tap dance. I've been, maybe some of you guys have experienced this, but I've been made to feel that I'm kind of a, a lesser form of dancer because I'm a tap dancer. And I kind of, I mean, it sticks with you, doesn't it? And it, it's happened multiple times throughout my life, throughout my career, growing up in studios to like last week, um, and it's been kind of a pattern with my life, getting a little bit of shade for what I wear on my feet. And this goes beyond tap dancing as well. Um, I'll go to that story real quick. I was actually, and still currently am, a dancer for a band. Uh, there's this fantastic, I may have talked about them in a vlog before, I'm not sure, but um, there's this fantastic band called The Crew Shadows, and they're like a gothic EDM um, band. They're wonderful. Uh, they spread a beautiful message um, within that community and I was a dancer for them, touring with them for a couple years and I still dance with them a few times a year when there are shows. Obviously there's no shows right now, but you know what I mean. Um, and for that band we do legitimate contemporary hip-hop, ballet, jazz, everything but tap actually because you can't no, I tried. He was like, no, nah, it's okay. Um, didn't really fit the motif, but um, we do every kind of dancing, but we do it in four and three quarter inch platform boots. And what I found is that when I told people, oh yeah, I danced with a band, we did ballet, hip hop, contemporary jazz, the works, they would go, oh wow, oh, I'd love to see some of that. I can't believe you were a professional dancer. And then I'd show them some footage and the minute that they asked me or realized what I was wearing on my feet, suddenly their image of my being a professional dancer turned into, oh, well, I mean, this isn't really, and I was like, okay, you try it. We did pirouettes, leaps, fan kicks, we did it all in four and three quarter inch platform boots, sometimes on surfaces that are like, I mean, maybe four times as big as this chair. Okay, like put four of these chairs in a box and we had to do all that on that. And suddenly though, they look at what I was wearing on my feet and they're like, but I mean, that's not. And I'm like, but like, it is. <laughs> but they see the shoes and then immediately the perception changes. And coming back to tap dance, I think that happens to us a lot. 
and I think kind of in an opposite way almost where they see, oh, well, you, you go to a competition and somebody's like, oh, well, she's a tap dancer, so. And then they end their sentence with either, so she's not gonna do that good, or so she's probably just gonna take the whole thing as tap dancers always do. Like, you, we, you can't have it both ways, first of all. And second of all, like, what does that even mean? What about what we do isn't as valuable as every other style of dance is. And you know, I guess it comes from people thinking that they're not related. And they are and they're not. A tap dance has roots that go like super, super deep into a very, very specific place that maybe a lot of these other dance styles don't. They do come from different places. But it doesn't mean that one is more, one requires more skill than the other. That's like saying ballet requires more skill than hip hop. And I don't agree with that. Ballet requires a whole lot of skill, a very specific kind of skill. But don't downplay the amount of skill and talent that it takes to be a hip hop dancer. Like there's a reason I can't do it. And it's because it requires so much skill. But tap dance as well, it requires so much skill. It's just the skills are so different from what everyone else is doing. And so slightly unrelated to what the other styles are doing that I guess maybe Maybe this all comes from a place where they don't understand it. So instead of trying to understand it, they kind of just say, oh, well, it's this and it doesn't count. And I guess there, I think that's what it is. I think it's the, it doesn't count. That's really what makes me feel like this. Um, I know this started with what if you weren't allowed to, but then it turned into this feeling of constantly having to prove that I'm really a dancer because I'm a tap dancer. And first of all, you can't say that tap dancers don't count. That's literally what we do. It's a pun, guys, it's a pun. Anyway, <laughs> and I think these things have happened throughout my life that I didn't even notice until I looked back and reflected on it and went, yo, they disrespected tap. And I like didn't notice it in the moment. Um, I remember this one time as a teacher, I was at a studio, we were having competition team uh, auditions, right? And I remember being approached by the director of the studio saying, well, this, this one girl tried out for the main company and she, she doesn't really have the skill. Um, so we were thinking that we could put her in tap with you for competition because, you know, again, she doesn't quite have the skill here, but maybe she would do tap. And I asked her, I was like, does she tap? Has she, I, she's never been in my class. Does she tap? And she goes, well, no, but, and I was like, are you serious right now? Like competition team, it requires the same amount of skill as your competition team, just a different set of skill, <laughs> you know? And it's, I didn't realize how offensive that really was until later when I thought about it. Like in the moment I was like, no. And then later I was like, yo, <laughs> um, very articulate today. Um, and then another one is like at that same studio, actually, a friend of mine took over and she was setting her, this was after I left, uh, she was setting her dance and a parent walks into the rehearsal, which first of all, don't do that. And second of all, the parent just like walks into rehearsal and says, um, can you guys go back to that one part with the real dancing? And my friend who is like full of sass, by the way, goes, you mean the whole thing? because all of it's dancing. And the parent was like, well, yeah, but I mean like the part where they were doing the turns. And the parent was literally talking about the three seconds of the dance where there was a pirouette and calling that the only real dancing in there. And it was one of those moments where it just kind of clicks. And you're just like, how is tap not real dancing? Is it because it fits into two categories because it's music and it's dance? Is it because, I don't know. There's something about tap that either makes people think it's super easy or it's like way too hard. And both of those schools of thought cause people to put it on a completely different, typically lower plane than the other styles of dance. And I'm just talking in like my experience in the Western world of dance and the American world of dance as dance competitions and growing up in the 90s, 2000s, 2010s. Holy crap, it's 2020. Um, but you know what I mean, growing up in that era and that kind of thing. So I'm sure lots of you guys have had different experiences, but 
my friend's question brought all these feelings back and I wanted to talk to you about this and share some of these experiences with you because A, I wasn't sure if you had ever felt this. I know my company members have felt it backstage at a show. I was about to get into the actual point and now I have one more story, but that's fine. Backstage at a show, I wasn't even there. I was uh, on the other side of the stage, but they were backstage and there was this company of ballet dancers, uh, young ones, um, like teenage age, and my dancers for my company were in their 20s. And they overheard in the dressing room, they're all sharing a dressing room, they overheard that, oh, well, yeah, there's three more companies to go. And then, well, there's that one tap group, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just worried about competing against the, the actual dancing. And they heard that. I, I forget what the show was. It was like for some kind of charity thing. I'm not sure. But there was a competition aspect to it. And there was that moment where all of them just kind of went, what? And then they came to me, they were really upset. They felt really defeated. They're like, they think it's not real dancing. And that didn't make them angry as much as it made them just completely deflated right before they had to go on, on stage. And there, there's that moment again where you're just like, why do I constantly have to prove that tap is real dancing? Who said it wasn't? Where did this come from? And that brought me, that all came back when my friend asked that question, what if you weren't allowed to dance? And I think that came back because my brain went, well, sometimes I get told that I shouldn't. And then I went, no, you don't get told that you shouldn't. You get told that it's not the right kind. It's not legitimate enough to be considered dancing. And that's almost as bad as being told that you can't dance, being discouraged from dancing and doing what it is that you love is almost as bad if sometimes not worse as being told you are not allowed. Because when you're discouraged from it, the you're not allowed becomes internal, not external. It's not somebody telling you you're not allowed to dance where you can go, well, I will anyway. This is now you doubting yourself saying, well, maybe you shouldn't. And who are you going to listen to more? An outside source or yourself? We listen to ourselves more. So I wanted to do this tappy talk. And usually my tappy talks are going to be super upbeat and super high energy. But this one I just felt was so important because I wanted to do this tappy talk and tell you guys, not only is tap real dancing, tap is also music. But tap is so important. It has such deep roots in history, and you should really, really look that up. I'll put some links down below of some fantastic YouTube videos that go into the history of tap. It's just, it's such a beautiful thing. But tap dancing is real dancing. Irish dancing is real dancing. Clogging is real dancing. All the cloggers from competition teams are like, it is. I just wish judges would understand. <laughs> but yeah, no, everything that you guys do is real dancing, it's legitimate, it takes skill, and don't ever let anybody make you feel like just because you wear a different kind of shoe, what you're doing is any less important than what they're doing. Because I was doing the same steps as those dancers were doing. I was just doing them in some crazy platform boots. <laughs> Which, dude, like, <laughs> it was, that's hard, but suddenly they see the shoe and they're just like, oh, well, that's not. And you're just like, actually, <laughs> it's the same. So what you're doing is as important, it is as legitimate, and it is as valid as everything else. And don't doubt yourself just because the people around you do. If the people around you are saying what you're doing isn't legitimate, hand them a pair of tap shoes and say, okay, you try. That should end the conversation. And that should end it within yourself too and say, just be confident in yourself and say, I am a tap dancer. And that is, it's good. It's not as good. We don't even need to compare. I am a tap dancer and that is good. That's not even the most clever catchphrase I've ever made, but you know what I mean? I am a tap dancer and it is wonderful. I am a tap dancer and it is legitimate. I am a tap dancer and it is the most valid thing I've ever said to myself. I am a tap dancer. You are a whatever you are, okay? So to my friend who does struggle with being told that they can't dance, um, my advice is to 
dance. Whether you have to hide it or not, whether you have to find a small corner and that is your corner where you get to do this thing that you love so much, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are and it doesn't matter what you're wearing on your feet. Tap dance. And if anyone else is struggling with not being allowed to or constantly feeling doubt that maybe this art form isn't legitimate enough for the people around you, tap dance. And that's really the last that I have to say. So thank you guys for coming to this uh, super serious taffy talk today. Um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for much more upbeat and happy taffy talks as well as tutorials and tutorials of all kinds, like every level, choreography, technique, you name it, I've got it. I do some crazy stuff on here too, like try on weird clothes and make um, uh, tutorials in it. <laughs> so definitely check that out. Um, I do some contemporary tutorials as well. And every once in a while, I'm like, hey, want to learn guitar? Here's a video. So definitely hang with me and become a part of my tap fam. And yeah, as always, thank you for dancing with me.